Think for the club. Four, 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 four. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bigfoot Club. Robert Jesse Dominguez, Ash Tucker, Stephen Robert Dominguez. Believe in us, believe in Bigfoot Club, because we are too. Hey, this is Jason McLean, author and illustrator of Metroplex Monsters, and you're listening to Bigfoot Club Podcast. I just wanted to mention, if you're listening to Bigfoot Club on any of these platforms, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Stitcher, Google Play, Alexa, YouTube, Listen Notes, or Deezer, please give us a comment, a like, a subscription, give us a follow, and we would greatly appreciate it. Also, please like and follow us on Bigfoot Club Facebook page. We're at Bigfoot Club, the number one. We're also on Twitter. Our handle is at Bigfoot Club, the number one. Also, check us out on Instagram. We're at Bigfoot Club, the number one. If you have any Bigfoot, paranormal, or just strange stories, please email us at Bigfoot Club, the number one, at gmail.com. Please check out Matt Knapp's YouTube channel, Bigfoot Crossroads and Cryptid Tales. Also, give a listen to Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio with Lauren Smith. Bigfoot Club, Season 2, Episode 43. We're going to be talking to uh, Lauren Smith with Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, everybody. Bigfoot Club, Robert Jesse Dominguez with Ash and Steven. Steven's actually in studio today. What? Yes. Steven, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix my mic. <laughs> Um, I can't imagine to, I'm trying how to match it to where you have up, it. You know? Oh, okay. Um, the way you know the way you have it professionally. So okay. if you, yeah, yeah, if you hear some banging, that's that's Steven. That's one of mine. Um, I am pretty excited today. Today we have Lauren A. Smith on the show. She's the hostess of uh, Night Callers Bigfoot Radio. Uh, welcome, Lauren. Hi. How are you guys? Pretty good. Pretty good. So we, I mean, it's I, I know I talked to you when I was in Tulsa last week, because mm-hmm. um, I know I know I have background, kind of background with you, and uh, Ash has has background with your your mom, because uh, I know uh, whenever I was leaving the TBRC, I was trying to recruit your mom onto that group. Um, that work out for you? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I know she she had she had put a um, like an interest into TBRC, and I think I was on my way out mm-hmm. when I was because I was in charge of all the recruitments for like like everybody that would put in like uh, interest emails or mm-hmm. anything like that. So I reached out to your mom. I think I interviewed her on the, I think on the phone, but I don't think I think I was gone. Maybe not pretty soon after that so i was i exodus from tbrc so yeah but uh but i thought that was kind of interesting that i i got to i I try to recruit your mom to the tbrc so i know and then you know however many years later here we are yeah in that living room just having chat yeah (laughs) so i know ash has uh actually been in the field with your mom yeah Uh, two times yeah just kind of like you know casual it was like us and luke and a few other people and you know, took a, like a three cool. day three day weekend and just kind of. So what you know? What year was that? Do you do you recall? <sighs> like probably okay. The first one was the weekend of my twenty first birthday party, so I guess that was two thousand seven. Okay. In two thousand eight. Yeah. Was this year. before or after Hallsville? After. After. Because Hallsville was, was when in, I first met you guys. It was in those. Mm. Uh, Hallsville was in those six. Yep, and then after that, I'm like, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a rush. And they did. So, yeah. so it's just kind of odd. We, I mean, it's kind of it's cool that we actually have yeah. background with your mom and stuff like that. And then, uh, oh, it is. It feels like it's a small world. It know? is. The Bigfoot community really is like a, it's a community. It's a small world. <laughs> yeah, I always was in. You know, I was talking about that. I don't remember if it was <laughs> during the show yesterday. <laughs> Or when we were talking to Matt, but just like, just even her just 
all her recordings, all kinds. Are yeah. just, it's just really interesting and it is cool. You yeah, know, she's, you know, she's had 20 years in the field, mm-hmm. so she just has... You know, all these recordings and, you know, just so much great stuff. And, you know, audio is really her thing. Um, That's where she is, you know, that's the avenue of researching that she's really passionate about. And um, so she has all this great stuff. She actually sent me one today that I was listening to um, because we had been talking to Doug Highcheck on the show. And he had mentioned something about infrasound and how he could hear it on audio. And so she got this idea. She's like, I have 20 years worth of audio. What if I go back and start listening and see if Mm -hmm. all these things that I thought were like, you know, wind on the mic or all these weird sounds that I thought were breathing or heartbeats or whatever. So she went back and started reviewing her old audio um, that she had written off as something else to see if that matched the sound that Doug had been talking about. And um, she actually did find one clip that had that on there. So we're going to go ahead and send that to David Ellis and see if, um, if, if he can kind of isolate what that is. That is so neat. I am. That is so it was, neat. It was really cool. <laughs> you know, just she has this back stock of audio and stuff. And, you know, I have people that are like, oh, hey, um, you know, uh, what do you have any, um, you know, Bigfoot evidence that you could send over to me? And I'm like, well... My mom's my research partner, and she kind of holds all of it. So mm-hmm. let me get with her, and I'll see if she has something I can use. <laughs> but, like, she has everything, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, your mom had a, a great run with uh, – she was on Block Talk Radio, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we started Night Callers Bigfoot Radio. Um, she started it in 2009. or Yeah. And she started it with some others, Matt included. And then that kind of fell apart, and then I took over with her, um, me, her, Luke Gross, um, and a couple others, and we took it and ran with it. And so we have been on air for over a decade now. She actually resigned last year. Mm -hmm. Um, She retired from her job and retired from the show. She handed the reins over to me, and I took it, and I've taken it to a whole other level now. So I'm building on her legacy and, and, you know, trying to make it even bigger than it was and Um, you know, I have to be grateful for her for doing this for 10 years and giving me something to take into the next level, you know? That is so awesome. I love that. That's, Mm -hmm. that's such a good story. It's almost like a, like a Hollywood story there a little Mm -hmm. bit. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody loves that it was like a mommy daughter thing, you know, like this was our thing and it's like the fa- it really is the family business and i know we we're just talking about supernatural not I, long ago. I was so <laughs> sad yesterday i didn't know what to do so speaking of which i bought a shirt from them like oh, a, i don't it, know what to do so i'm just gonna buy a shirt is it the family business what yeah, shirt is it? the brewery from the oh, brewery yeah. i was like In i'm sad we, we really need to take a trip down. yeah I would no, no no yeah yeah love yeah. to yes. drink a beer from Jensen Ackles. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't drink anymore, but I would pretend like got, I'm drinking. They so. have food and they have yeah. like a nice oh, yeah, outdoor yeah. area oh. and stuff. You know. Yeah. So. I want to go with you guys. When come you on, come on, trip. Yeah. <laughs> because I am a... such a huge SPN fan, yeah. and okay, um, so like so. I said, I have not watched the last episode because, and I, I just can't yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, haven't either. I'm being so. a total baby about it. I, I am too. I am too. So I'm I'm with you on that. So I had to go ahead and do it because I'm like it's gonna get ruined because it was starting like nope, nope, nope. Oh, I'm like. You know, social yeah, media and stuff. So, if, if you're following them, yeah, though, they'll, they'll probably get ruined that way. But um, how do you yeah. how do you feel about uh, Jared Padalecki being Texas Ranger? Uh, I think I, I'm probably I would probably invest like at least on the first the pilot episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, Jen is playing his wife, who is dead. Wow. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I kind of I'm whatever about it. I'm but, excited because I like the original. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, it's like I want to be excited and I want it to do well for him. But, you know, because that's cool that he gets to film in Austin. And he gets to be with his family and stuff. Yeah. But it's, yeah. Uh, it's just I just don't know how, you know, we'll just see when it gets here. Yeah. I, know, I guess, you know, I'm not excited, but I'm not like whatever you. I really, it. really hope that they Jensen does like a cameo on it, like his old partner or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be that would be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. To have him on there. <laughs> And then Jensen, he's already starring in another, or 
He's in another show, right? The Boys? The Boys. Yeah, the Boys yeah, is, a, yeah. is a really good show. That's a yeah, really good show. I haven't started yep. watching it yet. I wanted to finish my SPN rant, run and yeah. then, you know, follow them wherever else they go. Yeah, because um, that's Eric Kripke, too. So mm-hmm. it's got a lot, of, a lot mm. of those people on there. A lot of like Jim Be- Beaver plays Robert Singer. Yeah. FBI <laughs> 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 um, or whatever agent. Okay. Uh, Lauren, I wanted to ask... Um, because you actually started in the field very, very young. Did you not? I did. I did. So, uh, you know, my mom, <clears throat> I always tell people, like, she, so my mom and dad divorced when I was really, really, really young, right? Mm-hmm. So I lived with my mom until I was, like, nine. When I, when my dad had my little baby brother with his new wife, you know, ten years later, um, I moved to Oklahoma because I wanted to be around my baby brother. So my mom was, you know, still in Texas and she was just kind of heartbroken because I had left. And so she, you know, she would go out fishing and stuff with, with my stepdad and she had this experience anyway. So one day she was cruising through pal talk because she was, you know, kind of trying to, she was lonely and she was heartbroken because I was gone and, and, you know, so she was trying to kill time and all that. So she was in on pal talk because back in the day that was huge. Mm-hmm. And, um, you come across this Bigfoot community and on pal talk and she's just like, what? She was laughing. She's like, these people are crazy. There's no way, you know, that they really believe in Bigfoot. Oh my God, that's so stupid. And so she would sit and like lurk in the chat room, just laughing at these people. Well, one day they had played, this um piece of audio and it was a scream and she had already heard this scream when she was out on the lake and they had described how it was a bigfoot and she just you know stopped and sat up and she's like oh my god like i've heard that here and they had you know they went through and described how it wasn't a mountain lion it wasn't this it wasn't this it wasn't this and then played it again and, and she just kind of started to take notice and then she started to listen more and more and learn um, she became friends with these people and then she was on the phone with, uh, I can't remember who she was on the phone with. I, oh, I can't remember who it was, but she had her first sighting while she was on the phone with one of them. And then the very next day, a woman named Kelly, who has since passed, may she rest in peace. She drove down from Dallas and she went and investigated this sighting with my mom. And anyway, from there, just like Bigfoot research does to us, it's like an obsession that takes hold. And so from there, she would go on outings and she would constantly be out in the woods, you know, researching. She would be on the computer. She would be compiling data and evidence and all this stuff. So um, I would come home and visit on the breaks and every single break, you know, for a whole summer or winter break or whatever, I would be with my mom out in the woods and I would be, you know, looking for tree bows and looking for sign and, Um, you know, we would look for footprints or whatever. Um, we would go on outings. And so I'm out there just little bitty me, um, tagging along with all these adults and I would be terrified most of the time. Um, but you know, she, she was just passionate about this. And so, you know, normal kids grew up on summer break going to, you know, going to the beach or, you know, doing pool parties. And I was out in the woods with my mom just, you know, learning how to do a famous call or, you know, whatever, just um, learning everything I could from these people, whether I wanted to or not. So, mm-hmm. you know, I was talking to a friend of mine about the show and everything. And, and I said, you know, I feel like You know, I was out in the woods, I guess, a lot with her, but just on breaks and stuff. And she was like, okay, so three, four times a year. And I said, well, yeah. And she was like, so that's three or four times a year for, you know, let's say 10 years. Um, So she said, let's just say that's 40 times that you were out in the field looking for Bigfoot when other kids your age were not. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that's kind of a big deal. I don't, (laughs) that's just how I grew up. I, I was raised weird. I would say that you've probably been in the field probably more than some people that are in charge of other Bigfoot groups. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> And that's just, you know, when I was, like, growing up, that's not even now. Yeah. Um, you know, because I kind of got out of it after I graduated high school and moved back to Oklahoma. And then I started getting back into it and then really got back into it um, 
once I started back on the show, I started getting back into research. And uh, within the past few years, I've really started getting out on my own and um, going and just researching the way, you know, I was taught old school research. And Mm -hmm. I'm I'm applying some new techniques to it, but mostly like the old school research is how I was brought up on this. That's what I cut my teeth on. And so I see people out there doing new stuff and it's great. You know, I'm, I'm happy that they're out trying stuff, but it's I'm just like, they'll, they'll be like, oh, I'm doing this and this. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, we did that like 15, 20 years ago. I but always I mean, say that. I always know, say just, that. You know, but, you know, try it now. It might work. That's yeah. great. Um, I'm going to go over here and do this, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I recently started going out on, you know, and researching. I've researched Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Kentucky, um, you know, drove all the way to Kentucky, hiked back into an area and stayed for four days, um, and Impressive. camped and, and researched, uh, with five guys. Um, they were great. They were, you know, perfect gentlemen. They were very protective of me. Um, and so even, so I was raised in this, um, which I guess is weird, but I'm just a second generation Bigfooter. Like to me, that's just who I am. Um, my mom is my Bigfoot Yoda, but um, so now when I go out, mo- if it's not a dangerous area or a, you know, a night hike situation, whenever I go out, sometimes I'll take my kids. And so my kids have been brought up in this now, mm. and, you know, they know how to research and they look for signs and they do call. And, uh, my son the other day actually told me that he had a sighting, um, in the pasture behind our house. You know, he just randomly came inside and he was like, mama, he's like, I saw, I saw Bigfoot. And I said, well, okay, where, bud? He said, I was standing on top of the slide, and I looked, and a Bigfoot walked by the back fence, and then it ducked down behind the fence. And I said, well, what did it look like? And he said, well, it was tall and black. And I said, okay, what did it do? He goes, then it bammed on the trees. (laughs) And it was so, my son is four. Yeah. And it was really cute. And so I eventually got out of him that he was telling a story, but... It's just crazy to me how much he pays attention to yeah. these experiences that I get from other people, you know? That's, um, that was pretty cool. Yeah, the uh, description of that, that's some validity stuff. So that's, I, that's I actually mean, good. <laughs> I actually took him behind the, because we have a privacy fence and then there's just this acres of pasture. Mm. And so I took him back there and I was like, you know, I said, where was it exactly? I wanted to make sure that there really wasn't <laughs> something back there, but it was just where a bunch of cows had bedded and stuff. And so... Um, but yeah, it was a really good inc- account and I was like, okay, all right, this kid's paying attention. That's awesome. That's impressive. So, mm-hmm. oh, what's even more to me, this is my favorite part. Um, so that's my four-year-old, my eight-year-old. He tells me all the time, mom, Bigfoot's not real. And I'm like, okay, why do you say that? He's like, because it's not, he's like, it's just people in costumes or it's a bear or an owl. He's like, he's like, I just don't think it's real until we find it. And I'm like, you know what, bud? I am very proud of you because I would rather you think that yeah. it's not real until it's proven to you than believe it because I tell you to. Mm-hmm. That and, is, um, yeah. I, I'm so proud of him, right? Like that's yeah. a good scientific approach. And skeptic, so, yeah. Yes, like he's so skeptical, and I'm fine with that because um, I'll take him to events, and you know, I have friends that'll dress up in Bigfoot costumes and take pictures, and I'm like, look, Bigfoot, and he's like. Ugh. That's Billy in a costume, Mom. <laughs> like, all right, you got me. But I said Xander doesn't know that, so just pretend it's Bigfoot. But um, I've shown him pictures before. There's that one picture. Oh, I think the story is that this um, female wildlife researcher was out, and she spun around and took a picture of something real quick, and it was peeking out behind a tree. Mm-hmm. And it's a famous picture. Like, it's been circulated a billion times. Well, I showed Adam, and he goes, Mama, you can't fool me. And I said, well, what? And he goes, that's an owl, obviously. And I go look through owl images on Google and compare it, and it was a an owl face. Dead on? And this kid nailed it. Wow. He was eight. And I'm like, okay, if my eight-year-old can clearly see, like, pull this out, you know, what it is or isn't. But there are... A much older Bigfoot people that would be like, "Oh, it's a Bigfoot." No, they, would, they want it to be. They would. They would. Yes. They would circle it in red. Red. <laughs> red. Yes. 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 Luke arrows. Luke used to always say all the time to me, "When in doubt, throw it out." <laughs> yes. So. Absolutely. If Debunked. it's if if you have to like hold the picture up and point it out to me, you know, yeah. and, 
and outline it. Just don't don't show me. <laughs> and I hate to be that way, but no. And you know, there's a lot of people they get excited, and I'm like, how long have you been doing this? And they're like, oh, you know, five years. And I'm like, oh. Get back to me when you have seen 20 years worth of pictures and videos of blob squatches that, you know, aren't definitive. And then uh, get back to me then and see if you just aren't that excited anymore about it. Uh, Smith, whenever I start making shirts for a Bigfoot Club, I'm sending you a shirt. <laughs> oh, thanks. Because <laughs> I love oh, that. I love family that. Family business. The family business. So, yeah. <clears throat> so we get a copyright infringement. I know, right? <laughs> wow, <okay. laughs> I know, but it would be from Jensen. So yeah. worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I would frame it. I would like print oh. it out and frame it. <laughs> he signed it. He signed it. <laughs> yes, a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> so proud. Um, I was gonna. I was gonna ask you also. Um, have Have you been in the field with uh, Luke Gross or? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, have I? Hold on. Give me a second. It's okay. The brain is clicking. Yeah, I I have gone out with him. I know I have. Man, that's that's you know pretty good to learn from your mom. And if you ever, you know, were in the field with Luke, I mean, that's man. Yeah. That's, so yeah. I camped with Luke before. I want to say once at least but i was young younger when i did Mm -hmm. and then i camped with luke a few weeks ago um at falk for the falk halloween bash that i put on help put on so um but we didn't research then we just we camped together and you know but it was it was more of a catch-up session because we hadn't you know talked in however many years since he um stepped away from night callers and so we just uh we caught up and it's funny because he wanted to quiz me he was like well you know, quizzing me about my research style and stuff. And, and I was vocal about it. I was like, well, I believe this and this, and I can't stand when people do this. And, you know, I was very vocal about it and like amped up. I had had a very large thing of monster coffee that I probably shouldn't have had. So, (laughs) um, I mean, I was just like the energizer bunny and he was like, okay. He's like, you know what? He's like, I'm so proud of who you've become, um, as a researcher. He's like, I am so proud of you. He's like, you've nailed it. And I'm like, oh, thanks. I didn't know I was, you know, being interviewed, but I appreciate it. (laughs) I mean, I mean to get quizzed by Luke Gross, man, that's, that's an honor because. And like measure up to his standards. Yeah. Cause like he. Yeah. He, he, you know, if he doesn't like you, he's not going to even bother with you. So, right. Uh, yeah. man, I, I love that guy. I mean, I love that I dude. Too. It was so good to have him back. And like, just, I was, I was just sitting there listening and my mom was like, so weren't you going to go do something? And I'm like, I, or I don't, I think I was like laying in the tent maybe the next morning and Luke was making coffee or something. And she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm listening to Luke's voice. Like I've missed him so much. <laughs> and he has such a great voice. He does. He's like very white, but better. And yep. I was like, I'm just listening to him and it, you know, just reminiscing. Cause I mean, he was a huge part of our lives, like a good friend and, and not a lot of people know this, but, um, so when we would do the the show, we would meet on Skype and have our show meetings mm-hmm. about the show to decide on guests and all that. Well, one day, it was um, New Year's Eve, um, 2010, and I had had the worst day at work. I mean, it was the worst day. So it was the end of the month. We had to run these reports. They took like three hours. I had to stay late, and I was supposed to have friends over that evening, and I get home, and... Um, my mom called me and she's like, Hey, we're having a meeting on Skype. And I'm like, Oh my God, are you serious? Like I'm having the worst day ever. So I, I get on Skype and my mic was acting up and I was having to like mess with it. And I was, I was just pissed off. And my husband comes over to me and he kneels down and pulls out a ring and proposes to me. And I just looked at him, you guys, this is so (laughs) awful. I looked at him and I said, are you really doing this right now? I, <laughs> so apparently he and Luke had planned this out so that Luke could record it on Skype and I could have it always so that he could get it back to me. And so I had all my people there, my mom, my brother, Luke, wow. all the show people. I had all my important people there when my husband proposed. But I thought that my husband had just picked the worst possible time to propose to me during a meeting. <laughs> And I was like, oh, man. it was so terrible. Oh my God. He still to this day is like, 
I can't believe that was your answer. I was like, well, I mean, what I said yes, doing? but why now? I was, like, I was like, are you really doing this right now? Like, my mic is not working. Jeez. Like my mic wasn't working. So Luke didn't get the recording like he wanted, but oh. you know, Luke was a big part of setting that up. And so that, that, that is, that, that does not surprise me at all. That's, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Luke. Yeah. That's Luke. He's such a good guy. He's and like the Matthew McConaughey of, Bigfoot. Of Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> Our future Just, governor. I, I like that. Yeah. Because he's, you listen to him talk, is like you don't want to interrupt him. You just right. just keep talking. Read a book. You, you know, you know, it's funny, Lauren, because like we, uh, at the, the very beginning of this season, uh, we started like in January. He was our first episode. And so we actually mm-hmm. drove to Hawkins to do like the interview with him. And I've never done that with like any like anybody at all. So well, yeah, because we've been doing it for a little bit of more than a yeah. Year. So <laughs> so we like drove to Hawkins and we got there and we got set up and we ended up talking to him what like three hours? I don't know, maybe two hours before we even actually did the show. Yeah. And like he was telling us like so many stories and I had to stop him. I go, okay, stop. We we got to do a show <laughs> we gotta, because <laughs> we gotta roll tight for the yeah we from we now on. we got to do the show and like uh, him and Cassie were so good to us they fed us very well and mm-hmm. uh, we were going over lots of old stuff and uh, man it's just everything he keeps everything I mean I I owe everything to him because without Luke I probably wouldn't be in Bigfoot at all mm-hmm. so uh, he's yeah. such a good man uh, I can't say enough good things about him because I think before. Luke came along. There wasn't very many Bigfoot websites in like the state of Texas, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so after he came along, and we, you know, he was in the GC for a little bit, and he came over. He formed TBRC, and we got a website up and going. And after that, it seemed like there was a flood of groups and websites. But I think I always call him like like the grandfather of Texas Bigfoot. That's D- me. D- I, I always call him that. <laughs> <laughs> so. I always, he's a, he's a great guy. Yeah, he and, is. Um, and he's he's if you if you get on his bad side, Ooh. yeah. First of all, you probably deserve to be there. Yeah. Yes. Um, and second, you know, you just you know you done messed up. You know, um, I mean, I've heard him talk about people who are on his bad side, and it's just like you're just sitting there listening. And you're like, thank God I'm not on the bad side. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. You just don't want to be his enemy. It's you really all don't. called for. Any yeah, that I've ever heard. <laughs> like I get it. Yeah, and for some reason he he just like instilled like this calmness in me because like yeah. mm-hmm. I would go I would go to the field with like lots of people, and I would like I would be nervous because you know I said okay you know I don't know what's going to happen here, and I would be nervous have uh, like a ton of anxiety and stuff and like whenever Luke was with us I was like calm I go everything's gonna be okay mm-hmm. Luke's here, mm-hmm. <laughs> Luke's Luke's here so everything's gonna be fine. So, yeah, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He is a great guy. I do, I do recall actually. Um, I went camping with him in uh, around Honobi um, for the first time I ever went to the Honobi Bigfoot mm-hmm. Conference. Um, I went camping with with him that weekend, so um, we had a great time and just you know lots of memories. And he showed me how his uh, recorder set up and how he made it and everything, which I just thought was so awesome and. You know, I've learned a lot, and and he's still, you know, we we still think a lot of him in our in our uh, in our family. Like my husband just loves him to death, and um, really missed him when he stepped away from Night Colors. My mom and I still say like he was the best thing Night Colors ever had. Like his voice and his ideas mm-hmm. and his graphics and everything. He was mm-hmm. really good at what he did. So, but we we ended on a peaceful note. We ended amicably, but you know, um, just miss the guy. Yes. <laughs> But um, are you currently doing like any like investigations or are you a part of like any investigations right now or? Uh, no, no, I'm not. I okay. am an independent. I do not roll with any groups because I have been part of the Bigfoot community for 20 years. And one thing I've learned is don't be a part of any group. <laughs> because yeah, I um, completely agree. Groups, you guys, but, um, drama. Yes. You, just, you can't escape it. And you know, I have friends with a lot of groups yeah. and you still can't escape the drama. So, but right. I do have an easier out being an independent. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm an independent. I have people that I go out with and that I really enjoy researching with. Um, but I will tell you my all time favorite person to go with is my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we just, 
she's she's the one who taught me what to do. Um, she's the one that I can talk about anyone with, or not anyone, I'm sorry, anything with. And, um, you know, we'll be, we'll be laying there in the tent at night, and I'll just reach over and touch her. And she'll immediately just kind of poke her head up and look at me like, what'd you hear? And we don't even have to talk. We just have this nonverbal communication that we know exactly what the other one is thinking in that moment. Um, so, you know, it's, but yeah, I, I'm not part of any groups, but I go out with a lot of groups and, um, you know, I've been all over the tri-state area at least. And, uh, you know, I, I get to see a lot of great, um, a lot of great places and, and investigate a lot of great places with a lot of great people and have some good experiences. Um, so I will say I have had a lot of experiences, Um, Some good, some bad, but I have never had a sighting. And that is incredibly frustrating when you have been in the game for 20 years. So, and my mom has had, you know, her number fluctuates because she has like a set number that are confirmed sightings and then some that she doesn't count as sightings because it wasn't like full daylight or something, you know, she's, which is good. She's very particular about, you know, classifying it as a sighting, but She's had, like, you know, at least five sightings. And so it's kind of like being the daughter of an NBA star and really sucking at that sport. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, <laughs> how have wow. I not had a sighting and I've been drug out in the woods how many times with her? <laughs> hey, don't don't feel bad because I, I know I talked to you off yeah. show at, in Tulsa. I haven't had one either. So yeah. Just uh, had some things happen. Like yeah, we had a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Screams. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been growled at. I've had mm-hmm. infrasound. Mm-hmm. I've had you know rocks thrown, um, bluff charges, you know mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. But no, I've had eye shine. I've seen mm-hmm. eye shine. That's about as close as I've gotten. But no, no Same sighting. Yep. Um, a couple things on at. FLIR or night vision, but nothing that I would definitively say yes, that was mm-hmm. Bigfoot. You know, so it's it's very frustrating, and I'm I'm really jaded at this point, and I feel like. You know, people will be like, I'll be out in the, oh my gosh, I was out in the field. This was at the end of September. I, um, some, you know, some of my friends rented a cabin, um, the Texas Bigfoot Rangers and a couple other people, they rented a cabin. And so I went up there and stayed. Well, one of the, one of the guys and I, we hiked down the mountain and we hiked down and we were sitting in the complete dark on some rocks, just, you know, letting everything come to us. And up at the top of the hill, they were doing, um, they were doing calls, and you know, I think they blew a siren a couple times. You know, it was pretty cool. Well, we're sitting there, and I had movement um, off to my right, and then over, you know, like nine o'clock. And so I didn't say anything. He said, "I hear movement." And I was like, "Oh yeah, where?" And he named the exact places I had heard the movement. And I was like, "Okay." I said, "Well, I've been seeing something over there, like a shadow moving." And he was like, oh, cool, okay. So we just sat there waiting, you know, trying to see what would happen. And I look over to where I think this thing has moved. And you guys, I saw an orb. Okay, it was a blue, like a pale blue orb right above the ground. And I cannot even express to you guys how pissed off I was. I mean, I was rigid. I was so mad, and he was just like, what? What's wrong? And I said, well, I'm not going to say the F word on here, but that's what I said. I was like, I just you saw can. a you freaking <laughs> orb. I was so mad. And he's like, well, really? What it looked like? And I was like, well, I said, you know, because it was a full moon. And so I had already, you know, kind of sat there, let my eyes adjusted, and I knew what, you know, the moonlight looked on the leaves and blah, blah, blah. And I said, this was bigger than that, and it floated along above the ground, and then it disappeared. And he's like, oh, my gosh, really? And he's like, why are you so mad right now? And I'm like, because, because I have seen a UFO. I see ghosts. And now I've seen a freaking orb. But you know what I haven't seen? You know what? In 20 years, a freaking Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Okay. I have not seen a Bigfoot, but I've seen an orb. I said, add that to the list. Just, you know, why don't I just go find Chupacabra and Dogman and, you know, Mothman. But not Bigfoot. You know, the one thing I really want to see. I was so mad and i'm still really upset about it i'm like that is just not fair i'm like and he's like well it's still kind of cool i'm like no i don't want to see an orb i don't want to see orbs or ghosts or anything i just want to see a bigfoot and um 
So, yeah, I can add that to the th- list of things I've seen that I really didn't want to witness. I don't I, no. <laughs> well, um, I th- you know, I'm, I'm there, too, so I haven't haven't seen one either. So and I've I been know. doing it since like ninety nine. So um, I just I don't know if you're as jaded as I am. Like I I'm at the point like I walk out into the pitch dark woods by myself. Mm-hmm. with you know my headlamp off and i just truck on into the woods by myself and people will be like you know what are you doing oh my gosh and i'm just like yeah well if i'm gonna see one and it's gonna take me out well at least i get to see one you know for a while there i was getting kind of reckless because i just like well i haven't seen one yet might as well you know go find one and just um so I had somebody talk to me about that and they were just like, well, here's the thing. Like the vibe you're given off is mm-hmm. that it's kind of like you don't, it's a very uh, careless vibe. Like you just, you know, you, you don't even care if they're there or not. And I'm like, yeah, I could see that, I guess. I said, I'm just, I've been doing this for so long and I'm just so disgruntled that I haven't had a sighting. Um, so I feel like, you know, the, um, I haven't given up. I haven't stopped researching. I still get out there. I still go look. I still, you know, try different methods of research. Um, I will say, you know, my favorite kind of research is getting out uh, as far away from people as I can with as few people as possible, preferably by myself or with another woman. Um, And knowing the geography and the wildlife. And honestly, my preferred method of research is thinking like a squatch, you know, um, you know, people try different things. They try to, like, sneak into the woods. And I'm like, if I snuck into your living room, wouldn't you know I was there? <laughs> I'm like, this is their house. You're not going to sneak up on them. Right. Um, so just, you know, thinking like a like a squatch. You know, I don't like a whole lot of lights or technology. Um, that's just me. I don't mind, you know, using technology. But um, when I'm researching, I don't use a lot of tech. You know, maybe audio. Um, but I, I don't use just a whole lot of tech because... You know, it's, I feel like that just deters it. I like that. Um, I will like equate it to the same thing as paranormal. Cause like it mm-hmm. took like paranormal or even like Bigfoot stuff. Cause I've done both. Um, whenever I was doing stuff in Paris, Texas, mm-hmm. it took me like six months for, I knew like Bigfoot were there. I was getting sighting reports, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that, that they were there, but I, it took me six months for for something to even get close, like throw rocks at me, or I could I could smell them coming, or whatever, mm-hmm. or get growled at. It took me six months just to be in the same area, and so I I hey, agree hey. with you. On- <laughs> hey Robert, how long did it take it for it to happen to me? Uh, first time I took you out in <laughs> twenty minutes. <laughs> it never fails. It never fails. I you know. Some people out, are just blessed like, with that. Yeah. Yeah. You take them out, and they're like, "Oh my god, I had a sighting!" And it's like, "What?" My friend Dustin, you know, he had been in the game for like two years, and you know, I go out with them, and they're doing all this stuff and calls, and I'm like, looking at them, like y'all, you know, chill a little bit, like y'all are just, you know doing an awful lot of calls and stuff. You know, I'm just looking at them. I'm like, oh, that's okay. They're learning. And we go to Falk, Arkansas, and this fool has a sighting. (laughs) Now, we had all gathered around the truck, and I thought I felt squatchy this way. So I take off walking by myself. Well, my friend Kendall walks with me, and we were just, you know, walking and talking, and we were hearing things, and everyone else went the opposite way. Guess where the sighting happened? The opposite, oh, no. opposite way. way. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, Dustin runs up. He goes, it finally happened. I had a sighting. He used the word finally. Okay, after two years. And I'm, I'm just looking at him. I'm like, he kid. said, it finally happened. And I said, what? And he said, I had a sighting. And I just looked Fuck at him. And I was you. like, <laughs> exactly. I'm just looking at him. And I'm just like, and like, you know, when you're so mad, your lips are like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, that's really great, bud. I'm so proud for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really want him to eat you right yeah, now. Like, like, I was uh, so mad. But I really was happy for him. Um, and his was a pretty good sighting. Like, he saw it through night vision peek around a tree. Mm. Like, come on, man. I would give anything for just a little something, something like that, you know? Like, oh, it was so frustrating. But, um, but you know, I feel like, well, if I just keep going, keep trying, get out there, you know, because if I think about it logically... My mom has been doing this for 20 years, and she's had, let's say, five or six sightings. 
So she's been out how many times? Mm-hmm. And five or six sightings over 20 years. And she went out a whole lot more than I did, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, okay, maybe I got to bide my time. So that's what I tell myself to make myself feel better. And then I have people that are like, yeah, I was just walking through my front door and it was sitting on the porch next to me. I'm like, come on. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> I've been looking. I've been spending money, I think- resources, time away from my kids. Come on, man. I think Luke, <laughs> Luke had a sighting like at... His mom's house? Yeah. At the front, and he was looking yeah, outside, front, and front. yeah, and they walked yeah. out in the front porch. I go, yeah. what the hell? Well, I kind of <laughs> feel like that's why I was so lucky. It was just the company I was keeping at that time. Yeah, the, yeah. the first time we took Ash out, it was like me, St- you know, Steven, Ash, uh, Billy was there, Billy Simmons, oh, Billy. Uh, yeah. um, Luke, and I can't think of anybody, like your, your paranormal yeah. group, right? Yeah. And like the first time we go out, you know, she gets we get like rocks thrown at us, and we get eye shine, and we get like yells and. Because there have been sightings in that same area. So yeah, it's like you know, Halls, Hallsville, Texas. Was it Hallsville? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Do you, you, you remember how Luke approached us? Uh, he said, "We're gonna go with this ghost group. We're gonna, you know, they're gonna show us some things, and and uh, you know, here's this. <laughs> There's been sightings there, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna do, you know." Do so two birds with one, one stone, yeah. and yeah. You know, they'll show us their their technique, and then we'll do a couple of big yeah. calls. And, and we got quiet to do EVP, <laughs> and it's like there's something walking around out uh, here. Yeah, so we got like some screams and mm-hmm. some tree knocks, some, some uh, rocks thrown uh, at us. Because yeah. he did that big tree that's right there in the middle that's yeah. is still there. You know, he knocked on it. Mm-hmm. And immediately it screamed yeah, I got fucking loud at us. And then it just, like, from all directions, just yeah. stuff being thrown. That's crazy. It was crazy. It was it was, it was <laughs> no. cool. And it was like, how, cool. Stephen, how, how old were you then? Uh, I think I was, like, 15. <laughs> 15. I think I was, I was 19. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, 19, yeah. definitely terrified. And that's whenever Luke, you know, pulled me aside. He's like, you're, you're just feeling adrenaline. and you Just ride it. Ride it out. Oh, it was, and it was so yeah. cold too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luke's such a good guy. Oh yeah. my gosh, <laughs> he's such a good guy. Yeah, just is. see him being all Yoda for you, like, mm-hmm. oh, listen, man, what you're feeling right now? Because yeah. that's how he is. He talks to people, and he just he's so chill. Like, I yeah, love it. yeah, I think the first time I went out with him, it was in Sulphur Springs, and we're on this lady's uh, property. And she was getting, getting uh, this Bigfoot coming across her property at, at night. And he told me, first thing he told me was, he says, Bob, you're either going to, this is going to get like its hooks in you and you're going to do it forever or you're never going to come back. <laughs> and like after that night, all that stuff that happened, he goes, well, I go, it's got his hooks in me. <laughs> so, yeah. so he didn't do the yeah. whole, you believe in Bigfoot? No. I'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Can we please put that on a shirt? Or we'll I know, right? Like, <laughs> and then just have Luke's face. <laughs> oh, um, man. He's such a good guy. Um, I, I mean, I just can't say enough good things about him. I say know, that every time, too. I say it every time yeah. about him. So. He's such a good guy. Um, and Cassie's great, too. You know? Yeah, she is. She, um, she's she been chatting with me a little bit uh, since we met up in Falcon. So she's, you know, she's... Um, I think she keeps him straight, you know, keeps him from uh, going crazy with it. Yeah, mm. she, she's a good lady. <laughs> That's the easy thing to have happen. I've talked about that before. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh, I want to so bad sometimes just like get into it hard. But like, no, 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 mm-hmm. no, that's not a good <clears throat> idea. Um, Lauren, I was going to ask you, um, you uh, founded Night Callers Production. Can you can mm-hmm. you talk about that a little bit or? Yeah, so that was a new thing. Um, so I have some stuff. So I have the show. Mm-hmm. And then I have some other stuff coming up that I can't really talk about right now. But I'm, I'm working on something mm-hmm. that's very important to me. And it's kind of, um, it's very personal for me, but it's going to be for everybody. And it's, it's you know, about research and stuff. And when I told my mom about it, you know, I was talking to her about the show and about how I grew up researching and all this stuff. And she, I, this is the, the funny thing to me. She's just sitting there listening. and She's very silent. And I was like, Mom, are you there? Like, I'm telling you about my project coming up that I'm so excited about. It's like my life's work. And she's like, yeah. She's like, I just picture this little like 13 year old Lauren with her arms crossed with way too much eyeliner on looking at me going, I hate Bigfoot. 
<laughs> and I was like, oh my God. She's like, that's all you used to tell me. I hate Bigfoot, mom. Because And I did because it would take her away from me. Yeah. You know, like mm. I would go out on these, you know, outings and literally I was the only kid and there were all these old people there and they would talk about Bigfoot constantly. And I'm just like, oh my God, there's nobody my age to like hang out with. You know, I'm out in the middle of nowhere in a tent. There's nothing to do. Um, and she's just like, I just think back to that little girl, just, I hate Bigfoot. And now she said, look what you're doing. You're making like your whole life is about this. Um, anyway, so Nightcaller's Productions, um, because I'm working on that project and the show and everything, it just kind of, I wanted one company that could be an umbrella and have all these other things under it, all my various projects, you know, what I was doing, I could just stick them under one name. So I have Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio, which is, you know, the show that's been on air for 10 years. Then I have this other project that I can't name yet, but I promise once I do, I will come back on the show and tell you about it. Yes. Um, <laughs> you have an exclusive there. Thank you. Um, and then I have uh, Weird Realities podcast, which um, I don't actually uh, host, but I produce for um, two girls or two women. And they talk about all kinds of amazing and weird things on there. So they talk about, you know, um, remote viewing and shamanism and, you know, just anything weird and abnormal and they really get into it deep um their first episode was over rh negative blood um and how that affected you know affects different things so it's just you know really cool stuff um and then i so recently i start so well, recently within the past couple of years i became good friends with keith crabtree um, so for those of you who don't know, he is, so the legend of Boggy Creek, it's an icon. It's, it's a classic. Um, the Bigfoot in legend of Boggy Creek, Keith played that Bigfoot back in the day. Mm. Um, and Smokey Crabtree is Keith's uncle. Okay. So that was my yeah. question. I was about to ask that yeah. question. So everybody <laughs> asked, they're like, so Smokey Crabtree. I'm like, yeah, so that's Keith's uncle. You know, he was very close to him. Um, so, and, and there were actually two Bigfoot in that movie. Um, the one that grabbed the guy through the window mm -hmm. and then the one that in the woods and Keith was the one in the woods. Nice. So, <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, Keith has a franchise, you know, he sells Falk monster stuff, um, you know, and he's always at the events and, you know, he'll stand up and he just, he's a big grizzly bear of a man. I mean, he's just massive and, but he had, he is one of the nicest people I've ever met. And so the very first time I ever met him was in Falk and we had been there for a camp out and he had come down and given us a bunch of firewood and like started a bonfire. And I was so nervous to meet him. You know, I was like, Oh my gosh, this guy, this guy's like an icon. I can't even believe I'm meeting him. And I walked up and I met him and I was sitting there listening to his stories <clears throat> and he had told me a few stories and we go to leave. And I just like walked up and gave him this hug. And I just looked at him and I said, Keith, I said, I had done imprinted on you like a baby duck. I said, I'm going to call you Papa Bear. <laughs> and so he just, he started laughing. And then after that, it was like, literally, he feels like a grandfather to me. And I just, I love him to death. I'm very fond of him. And um, <clears throat> he calls me one of his adopted daughters. And anyway, so a few months back, we had, we had done an event together in February of last year, this year. God, 2020 has been so long, you guys. Yeah, um, We did an event together, the Falk Monster Camp Out. And it's an annual event that we're putting on together. And then we did the Falk Monster Halloween Bash. So we've, and then we've done vendor events since then. Um, and so a few months ago, he actually asked me to be his manager of the Falk Monster franchise. Um, so that got added under the Nightcaller's production um, banner or umbrella. Um, so, you know, I do event planning now. We plan these events and then sell merchandise and all of that. Um, so, yeah, I kind of have a lot on my plate and it kind of all got, you know, just so weird how everything happens. Um, and then <clears throat> recently, hold on. Okay, so recently, <laughs> I had to get a thumbs up or a thumbs yeah, yeah. Or... I, that, I was thinking that I was thinking you're doing that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know, like, are you going to do it? Okay, so recently we were in Jefferson, Texas, and my mom was on the phone with none other than Matt Knapp, and we oh, were talking hello. about Bigfoot <laughs> research, and um, because there were some other people out there, Bigfooters, of course, that were camped right next to us, and 
they had, you know, mentioned they were going squatching. Well, me and my mom had picked out an area to go squatching. And um, the guy was like, oh, yeah, Matt Knapp told us about this great area. And my mom and I just look at each other because my mom had <laughs> been to this same this place mm-hmm. before where Matt's friend had had a sighting. And that's where we were going. So we just look at each other and we're like, oh, great. Like he told them the same place we're researching. So she calls Matt. And she's on the phone, and he was like, oh, he's like, I, I wouldn't have told him, you know, if I'd known you guys were there. Anyway, so they're talking and talking and talking and talking for, like, three hours. And finally, at the end of the conversation, I'm like, hey, Matt, so I've been thinking, like, you know, we should talk because we both have pretty big shows. And, you know, the podcast world and blah, blah, blah. So you, sh- you should holler at me. And he was like, oh, okay. And then I get this message, and he's like, yeah, so I really think we should talk. And I was like, yeah. Anyway, so he calls me, and we start talking and talking, and we come to the realization that we have been battling each other for 10 years with rival shows, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all don't understand, like, literally... I can't even tell you how many times the words came out of my mouth, fucking Matt Knapp. <laughs> he, would, <laughs> he would have posted a show that got all these views and my show didn't. And I would be so mad at him. Oh, I was like, fucking Matt Knapp. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking and I'm like, and, you know, we were both so hesitant to give each other any information. It's like we were two wolves circling each other. It's like, you know, like, hey, I need help with this. And he's like, I need help with this. And, like, we just wouldn't give each other any information to each other. And then finally we start talking and we're like, hey, what if we teamed up? Like, what if we became allies and helped each other, you know, like, my show, your show, like, you know, let's let's just, um, what did he call What did you call it? No, he's not in here. He <laughs> called it, like, um, like the... God, I can't remember what he said. He's like the superhero team up or something like superhero <laughs> alliance. He was like, we need to combine our superpowers and you know a team do up this or thing something. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. So anyway, we had decided to do that, and then so one of our first you know co-produced efforts is going to be a show called Planet Fear, and I'm really, <laughs> I'm really really excited about this show because. I am a true crime junkie, and of course, I'm into anything that's weird or mysterious or paranormal or whatever, right? That's how I was raised. So Planet Fear is going to be a true crime slash paranormal podcast, and we are going to cover anything that is mysterious or weird or fearful on this planet. But you have to you have to tell us whenever this is going to come out so we can yeah we can all tune in and start listening to this so. yes and I, I I would definitely tell you if I knew okay. um, it's so. going to be very soon where okay. actually as soon as I get off this show Matt and I are having a meeting of the minds and hammering out the details okay okay well, so but that, that sounds exciting mm-hmm, yeah we are really excited I'm really excited about it um I I mean I can talk about you know serial killers and murders and everything until I'm blue in the face like I literally when I'm stressed out or I can't sleep I watch um, I watch my whodunits on YouTube until I fall asleep and it relaxes me um, <laughs> usually the 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 bloodier the better I I have you know there's obviously an imbalance somewhere in my brain but. I love talking about that stuff. And, you know, anything weird, so paranormal, we can talk about cryptids, dogman, you know, skinwalkers, whatever. That show is going to cover basically all of it. So we're both kind of branching out from Bigfoot. We will still do our podcast, so I will still do Nightcrawlers. He will still do Bigfoot Crossroads. But we're conjoining on something that's stepping a little bit away from the Bigfoot community and covering all kinds of other mysterious things. I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. Thanks. So, great, yeah. um, we're getting close on an hour now. So, I was going to mm-hmm. ask you, um, how does how does somebody uh, find your Nightcallers Bigfoot Radio Show? So, um, a new show is aired every other Sunday on YouTube, and um, it's a live show. 
Uh, so you can go into the chat room. It's at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Mm -hmm. You can go into the chat and you can ask questions of the guest or you can interact with the other chat members. I have moderators in there that relay the questions to me or answer questions, you know, from the chat as well. Um, we are also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page and we have a Facebook group that's Night Colors Bigfoot Radio fan page. And that is like an extension of the live chat. So you can go post your stuff in there. Um, we advertise mm -hmm. other shows in there, you know, um, so you can go in there and just hang out and network. Um, we have uh, an Instagram. So you can follow us on Instagram. That's where I post a lot of my like adventure pictures of me mm -hmm. researching and stuff. So you can see me living my best Bigfoot love and life. Um, I have recently acquired Reddit. Um, this is. I, I know that I am a millennial, but I don't ever actually feel like a millennial, especially <laughs> when I try to do things like Reddit and the Twitter. I don't know how to work these things, okay? But I am trying. Yeah. Um, and then, as always, so, so we were on Blog Talk Radio for over 10 years before I switched to YouTube. However, a lot, a lot, a lot of my followers and listeners are podcast people they you know work day jobs and they listen to my show on podcasts so i am still available on all your favorite podcast platforms to listen to the show i download it to the podcast platforms for my people out there so you can find us on any of those and i will soon <coughs> matt <coughs> i will soon have a website and my merch store will be available as well <laughs> okay well good deal okay. um Whenever this this show is going to be posted uh, this Friday coming up, mm -hmm. and I'll have all your links on there. I'll I'll message you after this show and um, get all your links on it. That way, everybody can reach your show and your potential Along with merch. My seventeen and, page bio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My Hello. marketing girl. <laughs> yeah. So she's a good friend of mine. And this was, she just kind of fell into my life. And I was talking to her and she was just like, yo, you need marketing. And I'm studying marketing and I would love to help you with your show. And I'm like, what? Okay, cool. So she's very, she's amazing because I am not good at tooting my own horn. I'm very bad at it. And so she sent me this bio and it's like fully Lauren is like the most awesome person ever. And I was like, I'm uncomfortable. So I tweaked it and sent it back to her. She calls me and proceeds to chew me for 20 minutes about how I do not need to sell myself short. And I work really hard. Yeah. And, you know, I traded my nine to five uh, human resources job of a decade for a midnight to midnight um, entrepreneurial podcast gig. And so she's like, you work too hard to sell yourself short. And so um, we compromised and I have this really long bio full of Lauren-ness now that is what I sent you. <laughs> well, she sounds like a good lady. She really is. Mm -hmm. It's it's wonderful to have someone advocate for you. I, I, I'm very blessed to have the people I have supporting me and uh, pushing me to do bigger and better things for my show and everything all the time. Well, so. I know, I know we're like pushing you on this show too. Cause I do like, I do like a, like a, a pre-recorded uh, promo and I, you know, I push, I push my own, my own social media stuff and then uh, mm -hmm. Matt's and then I, I push yours too. So yeah, I heard that actually. So I wanted to thank you for that so much. Mm -hmm. um, I actually played it for my, my husband and my son last night and um, Adam was like, mama, night callers, that's yours. And I said, yeah. And then he played the clip that I did for you and he was like, mama, you're on his show. And I'm like, oh, just wait till next week, buddy. Like, he was so proud of me and I was like, aw. My biggest fan is not my mom anymore. It's my son. So that works. Yes. <laughs> but I really do appreciate that. And, of course, you know that you can share your show in any of my groups at any time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, tell Maddie that I will message him later. Okay. Will and, do. Uh, um, but, yeah, thanks thanks for coming on. and We really enjoyed it. It was, like, probably I – w I just want you to know right now, I was really, really nervous about having you on. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> know why but I, know. I, mean, I, I was really happy to be here and um i don't know why you're nervous because you know you've been doing this longer than i have so well you know i mean you're you're like big league so no. you know you you and your mom are like big league so 
maybe my yeah. mom. You know, her nickname um, in our little circle is the Legend. Um, <laughs> and so now her and Luke are the Legends. Um, I, I and love they it. Both it. I love they it. both hate it. They both hate it so much. But <laughs> it's true. They are. They are the Legends. Maybe. They are. They are. You're lucky if you get to go out in the field with them. Count yourself as blessed. Absolutely. You're going to learn so much. But thank you guys so much for having me on tonight. I'm, I'm honored to be here. All right. Have a good night. All right. Easy. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. I must bid you adieu, and so goodbye, <laughs> and good night, bang! <laughs>